Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Dowden. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. I'm grateful to the Honourable Member for Newcastle upon Tyne North for securing this debate, and I pay tribute to the work that she has done on this issue. And I'm also grateful for the contribution, the thoughtful contributions made by members on this very delicate issue from all sides of the House. Uh, we welcome the announcement of a ceasefire in Israel and, Ga and Gaza on the 20th of May. It's an important step towards ending the cycle of violence and the loss of civilian life. And the UK offers our deepest condolences to the families of all those who have lost their lives. Uh, we also echo the condemnation of the um, uh, anti-Semitic actions that we unfortunately saw on the streets of the United Kingdom. Um, and I'm very pleased that uh, members from uh, across the House have also condemned that. Um, I, I, I gradually will thank given way. Um, I, I think the, the tone of this debate so far today has been incredibly helpful in terms of condemning the anti-Semitism uh, on our streets. Uh, does it agree with me that every single member of this House has a duty to do so? And when we see banners calling for uh, Palestine to be free from a river to the sea, when that is actively calling for ethnic cleansing of Israel, does he think that we need to con condemn this wholeheartedly and, and will, will he make a statement in the House to do so? Um, I, I thank my honourable friend for the uh, question that he's just asked. I think, um, I think as we've seen today, there is widespread condemnation of those acts, um, and uh, where there are small pockets of resistance condemning such actions, I think uh, those individuals stand uh, stand out with the mass of uh, the viewpoint of this house. And this is an issue that I have no doubt will come up in uh, departmental questions tomorrow. Whilst the ceasefire holds, we must make sure that every effort focuses on making it not just durable, but also permanent. The Foreign Secretary travelled to the region on the 26th of May and met with Israeli and Palestinian leaders. As he made clear on that visit, the recent escalation demonstrations, uh, the recent escalation demonstrates the urgent need to make progress towards a more positive future and address the long-standing drivers of the conflict in the region. We've worked actively during this crisis to urge all parties to work with mediators towards a ceasefire, and we fully support the actions of the Egyptian, Qatari and the United Nations to uh, that end. And we work closely, of course, with our friends and partners in the United States of America. It is important now for Israel to facilitate rapid humanitarian access to Gaza and we urge the continued opening of all crossings. The UK will provide £3.2 million of new aid to the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA, responding to their emergency flash appeal launched on the 19th of May. Funding will help provide food, water and emergency shelter to Palestinians affected by the recent escalation of violence in Gaza. And, and we, uh, let me make a little bit more progress. I'm conscious that, uh, I'm conscious that um, we're a little bit tight on time. Uh, we thank UNRWA for its support to Gazans displaced during the conflict and for continued courage and de dedication. The UK continues its diplomatic efforts to build confidence between the parties and to find a political way forward. And we welcome and echo calls for uh, equality of safety, security, freedom, peace and dignity, both for Palestinians and Israelis. I've spoken regularly with uh, a number of ambassadors from the Arab states to, re to reiterate the need for progress towards our shared goals, to reiterate the, uh, the need for a peaceful two-state solution. And we also play a leading role in this on the United Nations Security Council. Let me address the subject specific to the petitions. There have, of course, been many calls over the years for recognition of Palestinian statehood. The UK government position is clear. The UK will recognise a Palestinian state at a time when it best serves the object of peace. Bilateral recognition of it in itself cannot and will not end the occupation. The UK government continues to believe that without a negotiated peace agreement, 
the occupation and the problems that come with it will continue. And we're committed to the objective of a sovereign, prosperous and peaceful Palestinian state living side by side with a safe and secure Israel. That is why we are a leading donor in the occupied Palestinian territories and why we have set so much store by strengthening Palestinian institutions, fostering private sector-led sustainable economic growth in the West Bank. Economic progress can never be a substitute for a political settlement, but it is vital in the interim that Palestinians see tangible improvements in their daily lives. And we call upon the Palestinian Authority and Israel to resume dialogue on economic issues, to reconvene the Joint Economic Committee and to address the financial and COVID crisis together. The UK enjoys strong relations with the Palestinian Authority and they have made important progress on state building, which has been recognised by the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. It is so important now that the PA returns to Gaza to ensure that good governance is extended throughout the territories that will make up a future Palestinian state. It has been said from members representing parties right across the House, and I'll echo it from the UK government's position, we condemn in the strongest terms the firing of rockets at Jerusalem and other locations within Israel by Hamas and other terrorist groups. All countries, all countries, including Israel of course, have a legitimate right to self-defence and the right to defend their citizens from attack. In doing so, it is vital that all actions are proportionate, in line with international humanitarian law, and are calibrated to avoid civilian casualties. On the topic of the uh, second petition, uh, the government has made its position on sanctions clear. While we do not hesitate to express disagreement with Israel, whenever we feel it necessary, we are firmly opposed to boycotts or sanctions against Israel. We believe that open and honest discussions, rather than the imposition of sanctions or supporting anti-Israeli boycotts, best support our efforts to progress the peace process and to achieve a negotiated two-state solution. This government takes its export control responsibilities very seriously and operates one of the most <coughs> robust arms export control regimes in the world. We consider all export applications thoroughly against a strict risk assessment framework. And we continue to monitor the situation in Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories to keep all licenses under careful and continual review as standard. And we continue to urge all parties to work together to reduce the tensions in the West Bank, including in East Jerusalem, so that hopefully we will not see uh, 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 images as we saw uh, during May. A number of uh, members have uh, stated their desire for the UK to oppose uh, evictions and, de uh, and uh, demolitions. I can assure the House that the UK position on evictions, demonstration, uh, sorry, demolitions and settlements is long-standing, is public and has been communicated directly with the Government of Israel. And that is, we oppose these activities. In all but the most exceptional circumstances, evictions are contrary to international humanitarian law. The practice causes unnecessary suffering to the Palestinians and is detrimental to efforts to promote a peaceful two-state solution. So we urge the Government of Israel to cease its policies related to settlement expansion and instead work towards that two-state solution. The Foreign Secretary and I have made the UK view clear in meetings with Israeli leaders. Most recently, my right hon. the Foreign Secretary did so on his visit to Israel and the occupied Palestinian territories on the 26th of May. We continue to call on all parties to show real leadership, including the willingness to make tough compromises and to frame these unilateral steps that move us, uh, sorry, and to refrain from unilateral steps that move us further from our shared goal 
of a sustainable peace. We will continue our intense diplomatic efforts in the region, focused on creating the conditions for a sustainable peace, and we will work with our international partners towards that goal. Thank you.